Somebody shout hallelujah. If there is no force sitting on you stopping your hallelujah, then lift your voice and shout hallelujah to the King of Kings. You don't sound like you're excited. Somebody clap, shout, jump. Give God a big, big, big shout of praise. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Now listen, let me tell you something. The extent of your praise per time is the extent of God's grace and provision that you will receive per time. Are you hearing me? The Bible says those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Sometimes some people are broke not because they don't pray, but because their praise is too small to capture the harvest that they should enter into. Did you hear what I just said? Your praise is too small. You need a million naira and you are shouting for 1,000 naira praise. Something is wrong. There has to be joy is that atmosphere. Okay. Okay. You are here now. Somebody intimidate your neighbor, intimidate your neighbor with your praise. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Let everything that had breath. Listen, we thank God for the technology of instruments, but don't allow the instruments replace your, your take your place. You understand what I mean? Don't allow the instruments take your place. We were the ones created to show forth his praise. Are you hearing me? So when you come to church, when you come especially to Pneumatech, forget about who is around you. Who cares? Some of us are too shy. You don't want to shout too much because of the lady that is by your side. Something is wrong with you there. Huh? Maybe when you shout very well, God will speak to her to pay your transport. <laughs> Amen. Can we clap our hands for the King of Kings? Amen. Please be seated. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. John chapter 17. John chapter 17 I just want to read uh, two scriptures then just prepare our hearts for what we'll do I know this is the first time we are having an open service and let me explain to us briefly what an open service is in pneumatic an open service is simply a service where in line with other things that we do to capture that experience of the wisdom, the presence, and the power of Jesus Christ. It's also a moment and a forum where you are free to ask questions. Not only questions that relate to the messages that we have taught on this platform so far, but questions bordering your spiritual life, questions that may have erupted as you read or studied the Bible. All right? To the end that you are enlightened by the answers that you receive and that we can grow uh, to a favorable measure in our knowledge of God as it has to do with our spiritual life as it has to do with every aspect of our life sometimes I struggle mentioning spiritual life because before God there's nothing like spiritual life God treats your life as a whole Amen. I just answered somebody's question now. There's before God. It's we that say spiritual life just so that you know you can understand that okay, this aspect has to do with your relationship with God. 
this aspect has to do with your relationship with finances this aspect has to do with how you interact with human relationships this has to do with your purpose we only do that for the sake of our understanding but god does not treat you uh, or treat your life as per fragments or departments god treats your life as a whole that's why in third john verse 2 he says i wish above all things that you prosper as wholesome prosperity then he begins to break it down that if definitely you are prospering as an individual which number one is your relationship with god he says then you will be in good health even as your soul even as your soul uh -huh. so open service is where we just come you have the opportunity to ask questions i don't believe it's supposed to be just teaching every sunday the truth is what we have to cover as long as the knowledge of god that has been allocated to us is concerned i sometimes wish we have everyday service and recently god just showed me a couple of things that we needed to deal with but we don't have enough sundays for this year so we have to push it to next year and sometimes i'm paying because these are issues bothering people's life for instance if you come into a service now and you sense by the spirit somebody going through demonic oppression you are tempted to come and teach on deliverance but that service has already been allocated for something else that is the reason why in addition to the wisdom of god that you experience here there is the power of god so that the things that we may not have time to teach about the power of god can silently handle do you understand what i'm saying what's wrong with your voice do you understand what i'm saying uh -huh. so that's the reason for the demonstration of the power of god that there are things that i may not am limited to mention or to talk about so the power of god will just reach into your life to handle it that's why for no reason should you miss a service david said i was glad when they said to me let us go so much joy he had been in the presence of god that he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper at the tent of my god than dwell in the tents of wickedness in other words even if god is not saying anything let me just be there you can't be in the presence of god and go back the same no even if you don't wash a cloth just soaking it in detergent has done something to it yes or no so sometimes you may not come because you want to listen you just come to soak tell your neighbor soak okay now that's another thing i need to teach you about how to soak in the presence of god remind me i should talk about that before we are done with this session okay so you can learn how to maximize the presence of god when it comes and then how that god can use that atmosphere to change many things in your life and then when you leave you know you have shifted from glory to glory in jesus name so john chapter 17 verses 3 john chapter 17 verse 3 those of us that are following online god bless you for tuning in you too you are part of the service so you can go ahead and send your questions john chapter 17 verse 3 and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent so above everything that god wants us to experience and to come into in our relationship with him is that we get to know him knowing god has been simplified through the manifestation of the person of jesus christ the bible says in him dwells the fullness of the godhead bodily so just looking at the person of christ helps you to understand all of the fullness of god 
and i tell you the truth knowing god is eternal life in other words it's something that will keep doing for eternity and it is the proof that you have the life of god inside of you i believe in miracles i believe in god touching other aspects of your life but if over time you don't record a tremendous growth in your knowledge of god then you are not growing at all there is a relationship between your knowledge of god and the growth of your finances and this is a service where you will hear some things say amen that's why it's open service we we'll just will try to be as free as we can are we happy so there is a relationship maybe we need to next year i need to draw a chart and show you how that if you are truly growing in your knowledge of god there is a system an operational system with which you can use to measure your growth in god and how it will affect every area of your life okay and this is what the bible tells us that eternal life is truly when men grow in their knowledge of god and how can you know god you can know god through understanding and knowing the person of jesus christ and the bible tells us that he is the word of god so that's why we exalt the word of god in this place and so that as you keep growing in your knowledge of god day by day you begin to reflect the very life of christ and you become the very representative a uh, representational image of god daniel chapter 11 verse 32 daniel chapter 11 verse 32 is a popular scripture but i just need to read it so we can understand what we are to do today daniel chapter 11 verse 32 those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery but the people who know their god shall be what shall be what some of you are too used to television screens so you don't open your bible shall be what and king james says do exploits new king james says carry out great exploits so like bishop said the first thing the knowledge of God does to you is it increases your strength. Okay? And you need strength to know God. You need strength to serve God. You need strength to worship God. You need strength to give to God. Are you hearing me? Above many things, four things that you truly need the strength of God to help you with because there will be challenges in life that will try to shake you and make you deter your service to God, your giving to God, your worship to God, and your prayer with God. These four things are the primary ways by which you interact as long as working with God is concerned. So the Bible says that they that know their God shall be strong. So if you find yourself giving up in any of this, I'm just using these four aspects as basic. These are just basic. So prayer, worship, giving, and service. Let's mention it together. Number one, prayer. Number two, number three, number four. Number one again. Number two, number three, number four. These are just the basic, the basics in your relationship with god are you hearing me there are other things that are higher but these are just the basics so the amount of strength you find working in your life in these four basic aspects of your relationship with god can tell you how much of god you know so if you have grown to a point in your christian life where you can pray without ceasing then you know god is somebody here or oh, you don't like this okay let's talk let's talk about finance which one let's talk about which one because I, I noticed that when we're doing uh, the series on relationship and spiritual warfare everybody was just active 
because of demons from your father's house demons <laughs> That you see, all of that, that all of that is a knowledge of God you have on a level. As you rise higher in your knowledge of God, those things begin to fade. They no longer have a grip on you. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You begin to deal with higher issues. You can rise in your knowledge of God, like he said, to a place of dominion where you would have you will be it will be easy to handle all those things. So you no longer, at that point, you no longer serve God because of what he will do for you. Because he's no longer doing for you, he's now doing through you. See, that's why we must know God. And it's unfortunate that we have very few places now in the body of Christ where the truth of the word of God is taught very few places and i don't blame that the fact the fact that we have the few places is simply because the amount of believers that want to know god in our days in the last days is few meanwhile there is a there is a great advancement in witchcraft in wizardry the power of darkness the kingdom of darkness they are increasing in their knowledge they are getting new ways by which they can fire arrows amen it's only believers that are not growing in the knowledge of god scientists are growing right now i hope you know of course with with what you call stem cell this stem cell technology how many of you have heard of that stem cells and all of this new new technology in the place of health uh, when you talk about eternal life to a scientist from the western world he can dispute with you or when you talk about everlasting life he can dispute with you because they say according to them that with the inventory of stem cell technology and all of these other anti-aging effects they've been able to gather the body of knowledge that can make for the reverse of aging in other words doctors and scientists are coming to a point where they can reverse aging you have cosmetics that you put on so that wrinkles don't show that's part of it so for them they have found eternal life so it's no longer if it is possible it's now when it will be fully implemented i'm just saying this to tell you how that we are living in the last days where the bible says there will be increase in knowledge and i believe that the greatest knowledge that should multiply in the last days is the knowledge of god so if we have hungry christians if we have christians that are truly hungry to know god there may be church and pastors will become serious about teaching the truth of the word of god if you are here say amen and today God will shift you in your knowledge of him God is increasing your wisdom this evening in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen so we are we set for this service all right now I'm just going to sit down here because I know some of you your questions have a B and C amen can you clap for us we are we are we are going global Amen. It's not on TV that you see this kind of thing. Now you are seeing it in your front and you don't know how to appreciate it. Huh? Amen. All right. So we will, this is what we will do. The email, uh, let the email be on the screen and let, uh, no, you can just play your grand piano. No, no question for you. Amen. Uh -huh. so let the email be on the screen and let the PR line because it seems like some of us have some of us have a problem with adjusting to technology what's wrong amen all right some of us when they say when anything that has to do with technology you are always like this you want paper huh? no problem how many of you know those people that when they go to bank to sign for their check, they will use... Do they still do it up to now? If you are here, may God upgrade you in Jesus' name. 
anything automated they don't want amen you know well, everything is changing technology is, is improving we are in a cashless society now aha uh-huh. so make sure you grow with the knowledge of the age amen so let them put the email on the screen let them also put the phone number for the public relations line on the screen so you can either send it as an sms to the phone number and you don't need to put your name amen don't put your name or you can send it to the email just go on your gmail if you have that app go on gmail there's a place where they write compose there i know i know i'm saying this because we, there are some of us here we have smartphones but the phones are smarter than us you have not learned amen you have not learned i was in abuja and sometimes i used to travel like that and then i discovered that when i'm there almost for everything you can use your card and i don't like carrying cash but as soon as we arrived meduguri we went somewhere to buy something and i presented card they say no they need money i say may god deliver my territory in jesus name so some of you so i'm doing it step by step because i know some of you you have smartphone but the only thing you do with that smartphone is watch youtube so go on gmail hmm? you see that app with m touch it when it opens for you you say a place the right compose some of you don't even have email self if you don't have email go and meet our media people there let them open an email for you can you clap for that <laughs> somebody said <send me. laughs> amen you know i watch i watch a comedy some days ago i'm just doing all this so you can be relaxed to ask your questions i watched a comedy a while ago and uh, there were two guys living together and one of them was to apply for a job and so they told him to bring his credentials and he must have a facebook you know account and an email account and all of that and he didn't know what that was so when he came back he told his friend he said this is what they said i should bring you and then the friend knew that his his brother was a mumu so he decided to capitalize on him he said you have to bring thirty thousand. i must pay the white man that is going to send me your your pin then i will use it to open is that true uh, so if you don't want to be like that young man who paid thirty thousand, make sure you learn okay at least by now all of us here should have facebook address uh, accounts have gmail accounts and the rest learn it now for yourself so that when you when you start your business you can have an email you know for your business have a facebook have instagram that's how you can market yourself okay the world is a global place and the internet is the village square did you hear what i said the world is now a global village and the internet is the village square say amen to that all right so you can send it through any of that and uh, and i'm serious if you don't have a gmail account go to the back there where you see laptops that's where our our media stand is let them open for you amen and don't collect money if you collect money don't collect offering amen all right so let let me have the questions um bishop will just read the questions one after the other and they will answer and in case you are not comfortable with this one you don't want to send it through any of this okay write it on a piece of paper say amen uh, i know you i know you i know your type you say all this phone thing me i don't know okay write it on a piece of paper and then give it to any of our ushers okay the reason why we cannot pass the mic around is because it will become too it will become interactive which is good but we will not be able to contain the time all right and then number two some people will ask questions from other people's questions and we don't want that either amen so please send your questions there you can send it on any aspect of life spiritual growth finances 
deliverance warfare prayer spiritual gifts ministry whatever and i assure you by the help of the holy spirit and by the word of god the questions will be answered if there is anything i don't know we'll pass the mic around for anybody that knows it's an open service my pastors are here please celebrate god for our ministers this row we are not clapping i don't know where amen so they are here if there's anything i don't know i will just tell you i don't know so they will answer if they cannot answer some of us here are spiritual consultants i know god has graced you you'll answer and if there's anything none of us know then i will go back this week and go and do bible studies and then come back again to answer okay my desire is just for people to know god say amen to that all right let's have the questions now thank you so much sir for this opportunity please can we celebrate our father thank you so much we are grateful the first question we have here is please sir what is the difference between a mantle and the anointing read it again sir you said what is the difference between a mantle and the anointing all right how many of you want that question to be answered raise your hand let me see then why question why didn't you ask the question eh? since you you want the answer and you refuse to ask the question we'll skip the question amen yeah so if you have a question that you want to be answered you can send it now amen don't sit down there and be forming spiritual consultant. Amen. Uh-huh. Ask the question. Okay. What is the difference between a mantle and an anointing? Is there anybody that wants to answer the question for us before I, I, I answer? I'm not going to do this for every question. But I just want to do some test runnings here. I know we have some spiritual giants here. Some word machines and some fasting giants. So is there anybody that has an idea? What is a ma- what is the difference between a mantle and and what, sir? And the anointing. Anybody wants to attempt? Where is the microphone? There should be another mic. Where is it? Yes, one here. Okay. Eh? There's one. Okay, you answer. You that is holding the mic. Okay, okay. It's all, it's all right. Amen. All right. Um, I'm glad that the question says the anointing. If the question said an anointing, it would have changed the answer. Because there is a difference between the anointing and an anointing. First John chapter 2 verse 27 somebody there should read quickly I need because we don't have screens again I need somebody who will hold a mic and has a Bible ready for me to read or if you can be projecting on the screen okay everybody's on the screen let's manage our one screen for today so let's read the first sentence at the count of three one two three Now stop there but the anointing when the bible says the anointing is referring to the person of the holy spirit okay because acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with what the holy ghost so the holy ghost is the anointing and and that's why the word christ means the anointed and the bible tells us in john chapter 3 that god gave him the spirit without measure that means that for all of us here we have a measure of the holy ghost are you hearing me 
He is in us as a person, but not in his fullness. But when he came on Jesus Christ, he came on Jesus Christ completely. So all of the Holy Ghost was in Jesus. Alright? So when we talk about the anointing, we are referring to the person of the Holy Ghost. However, when we talk about an anointing, now give us verse 20 of 1 John chapter 2. But you have what? You have what? Come on, talk. If not, I will throw this mic at you. You have what? So do you see the difference now? Good. The difference between a mantle and an anointing is that first of all, the word anointing is from the word anoint. And it literally means to rub or to smear. It's like when you take cream or oil and you rub it on your body. Okay? Now, some creams or some oil come with a fragrance. So when you rub a cream that has a very good fragrance and you pass around, or perhaps a perfume, you put it on you and it has a good smell. Do people see the perfume? Who do people see? You. But the reason why they are attracted to you is because of the perfume that you put. So, when God puts an anointing on your life, He has put a measure of the ability of the Holy Ghost on you. Number one, so that you can serve Him. Number two, so that you can represent Him. And then number three, so that you can function as God in one aspect of your life. For instance, if God puts an anointing on your life that allows you to see with your spiritual eyes, that anointing makes it easy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So better put that the anointing is God's ability to do work. However, every Christian can walk in the anointing because the Holy Spirit was given to the church. But not every Christian can carry a mantle. A mantle is different. The word mantle actually came from, it's an Old Testament uh, illustration. In those days, old men were known to carry an extra clothing. Please listen carefully. Old men were known to carry an extra clothing. The reason is because the context of the Bible that we have was in the Middle East. Okay? Israel was situated around the Middle East, the Palestine, that place. And it's like a desert area. It's usually dusty. So those days they carried an extra clothing to cover themselves either from dust or from cold. It was usually dusty and sunny during the day and it was cold at night. So that extra covering was meant to serve as a protection and a covering. Now in 1st King chapter 19, when God called Elijah out of that cave, the Bible says there was a wind, but God was not in it. Of, of course, there was fire and all of that, all of that manifestation, but God was not in it. And the Bible says when Elijah heard the still small voice, he covered himself in his mantle. Okay? The reason was because Elijah was standing on a hill. I remember one of the manifestations was wind and there's no way strong breeze will blow that you will not look for a way to cover yourself so that was the mantle there however the spiritual significance of the mantle was that the mantle was usually a personal clothing that means that when God called a man to represent him to the body of Christ or to represent him to his generation there is an extra capacity that God gives to that man or better put an extra ability that God gives to that man aside from the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the man has it's called a mantle are you hearing what I'm telling you that's the reason why emphasis on that it was his mantle if you read first Kings 19 it was said that it was his mantle so 
if you have a special calling in God, and every, every one of us we have been called, okay? But then there are certain people who are called and they have a larger responsibility, either to the body of Christ or to a generation. So God will put on them a mantle. That mantle now helps them to function and to serve within that capacity or within that office of responsibility. The difference between them is that the anointing comes on you for a particular assignment or a particular time and when that assignment is over or when that activity is over or when that time elapses the anointing lifts you can't be anointed all day are you hearing me for instance now i'm not i'm not anointed that's why i'm cracking joke and you're laughing okay what i'm working with now is a mantle not an anointing i have a mantle to teach are you hearing me so if the anointing comes on us now there are certain things that each and every one of us can do but when the anointing lifts it is those that have mantles that will still be able to perform spiritual business are you hearing me so this one i'm doing now i don't need to pray to do it i can just do it normally however god gave it to me not to pride in it but god gave me because i have a responsibility to his body are you hearing me that means that because this one has been given to me hand into glove it means i will have to develop character and develop a particular discipline and a lifestyle that will accommodate the mantle that's the side effect so you can do without opening your bible for two days but if i don't for one day it's like something is scratching me i'll have to wake up in the night why because of the mantle isn't it mantles anointings are released by the holy ghost that's another difference but mantles are released through spiritual inheritance we are all in christ but god has given me a different inheritance after all what did elisha receive from elijah huh what did he receive from elijah you know god told elijah he said anoint elisha to be prophet in your room isn't it that means as you are going now there should be another prophet that will continue the work here however we saw that when elijah was to depart and elijah did that the bible says when he saw elisha on a field he cast he threw his mantle on him and then elisha came and he said let me go and kiss my mother and father goodbye and he said what do i have to do with you and elisha went back you know the story and then he came back and followed elisha elijah but at the end of that journey when elijah was to be taken off what elisha received was mantle that one he received by inheritance the first one was be a prophet because elisha was not originally a prophet elisha was a farmer so that first impartation that came which was the anointing that god told him El anoint i hope you know that there were many sons of the prophets that time why did god have to say anoint elisha to be prophet that's because elisha did not come from a genealogy of prophets so the first impartation was bring him into that office of a prophet because in his natural genealogy there's no prophet but it was one thing to be a prophet and it was another thing to carry that elijah's mantle and that was what El elisha received at the second place that's why elijah didn't want to give him elijah was taken to heaven but the mantle fell and the bible says elisha tore his clothes his own mantle just so that he can enter into the mantle so mantles are inheritances or rewards that god gives to individuals because of a role or a responsibility that they have to play to the body of christ or to their generation however the advantage is that both of them can be passed either by impartation 
for the anointing now is an impartation you can receive the anointing someone has okay and then through the place of inheritance you can receive the mantle that is on a man however it will not come free it will come by service say amen, amen. are we satisfied with that all right next question please let's clap for that thank you so much sir second question says sir according to matthew chapter number 22 verse 29 to 31 Jesus made it clear that there is no such thing as marriage in heaven, but we will be like angels. So then, what is this mystery about spiritual husband and spiritual wife? I think that's a good question. <laughs> what is the mystery of what? Spiritual husband, husband and spiritual wife. <laughs> okay. First of all, that person needs... Um, Let's go to that scripture first. Matthew 22 verse what? Matthew 22 verse 29 to 31. And Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken. You can sit down, sir. You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. Now, uh, the, I'll save us time. Otherwise, we would have gone to read the entire chapter. Or sorry, the entire context. Because it was a question that they brought to Jesus. Okay? They brought a question to Jesus to test him. They say, Master, there was a woman amongst us who married one of our brothers and the person died. And then she married his brother and the brother died. She married the brother till the seventh and all of them died. Uh-uh. Now witchcraft. So, they said... And then she, she died not having children for any one of them. So at the resurrection, whose wife will she be? How do I answer this question now? Holy Spirit, help me. Okay, first of all, let's, let's do some basics about spiritual things. First of all, the realm of the spirit is a realm of spirits that there are two dimensions of existence as the bible tells us in colossians chapter 1 i believe in verse 17 and 18 it says that he has created all things the invisible and the visible so there are two dimensions of existence as far as life is concerned the invisible realm is the spirit realm the visible realm is the physical or material realm, which is this earth where we are. Okay? Now, in the realm of the spirit, there are different spirits there. There is the spirit of God. There are the spirit of angels. Or there are angels because angels are spirits. Amen? Angels are spirits. There are demons. There are human spirits. All kinds of spirits are there. So, the spirit realm is not the realm for the Holy Ghost alone. It's just a, another dimension of existence where spirits exist. Now, God created you in such a way that the spirit part of you can interact with that realm. However, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. And in this verse here, when the Bible speaks of the resurrection, it's speaking about when we will be raptured. Okay? As it is said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you can read from verse 16 down to the end of that chapter. That those that are dead in Christ will rise again. In other words, they will come up with a new body, not with the body that they died with with a different body and then we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air and that's how we will transit into heaven okay that will happen at the end of the age so that's what the bible means by the resurrection there however so you see that this place now was not talking about demons 
this place now this resurrection is talking about is going to happen in heaven this resurrection means awakening to the life of god which cannot happen to demons which cannot happen to principalities and powers because they've been condemned already do we understand that now now let's answer the question so the, the person is asking what's the mystery of since they say that we will not marry at the resurrection this is a year after however the concept of spirit husband and spirit wife let me tell you the truth when i first heard that i doubted it years ago when i first heard about spirit husband and spirit wife i doubted it but you see as i grew in my knowledge of god and god exposed me to practical experiences in people's life i discovered that this phenomenon though it is a mystery yet it is real that satan's job is to pervert everything that god has created everything satan cannot deny that there is god to your life that's not what he's after what he wants to do is to do everything possible to make you think of other options than god but that if there is god or not satan has no business trying to disprove that no he knows the bible says in james chapter 2 that even demons know and they tremble so satan wants to his assignment is to pervert everything that god has created one of the things that god created was the institution of marriage and in the institution of marriage god created it to be one husband one wife a physical man and a physical woman and because the institution of marriage was created by god when it is entered into under god both of them have entered into a covenant that is sealed by the holy ghost that's why the bible says the two shall become one just the way he that is joined to the lord is one spirit so when two people get married under god that is a covenant they've entered into it is now sealed by the spirit of god they have become one and because of that there can be interaction there can be transfer there can be fellowship they can share things that they have both spiritually mentally and physically and satan knows that that union permits access for god to release his blessings through the institution of marriage through the institution of the home so what he will do is he has created another system to pervert that and the system is such that a spirit will masquerade in the life of one of the partners as the other one for instance in the life of the woman as a husband so you find somebody go to sleep and then in the person's dream the person will see the woman will see a man coming to perform the duties that are meant to be performed by her husband why because satan understands the mystery of union that when a man and a woman are joined together they have become one so anything that god has given to the man the woman becomes a partaker so if god has given the man the ability to have seed and he knows that when the man meets the woman that seed will become a child satan will go in the dream of the woman and cause a spirit to come as a man so that the spirit now has union with the woman and then they can it's not possible to be in union with two people in marriage so the woman is in a union with a spirit and as a result of that that spiritual union overrides on her natural union with her husband so that the the joining the oneness that she should have with her husband has been diverted because of the union that she has with this spirit so inside of children she has five broad and then there are so many things maybe next year when we we'll talk about deliverance we'll, we'll explore that aspect very well it's not only children that can uh, that will become an issue even your finances i've seen in people's life 
you know, in a little time that I've been in the deliverance ministry, I've seen in people's life where anytime they're about to hit a breakthrough, they will go to sleep and somebody will come and sleep with them. And unknown to them, what has happened there is an exchange. Spiritually, that breakthrough has been opened for you. And now you are just waiting for time to enter into it. But Satan understands that exchange can be achieved through union. So, come in union with this spirit. And then he will exchange your breakthrough for delay. And if there is anybody like that here, you will be delivered today. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I hope I've answered that person's question. Uh, that's the mystery behind spirit husband or spirit wife. You can listen to our message. I think um, uh, okay, next year we'll do a teaching on deliverance. But we have teachings that we did on deliverance last year and last two years. 2020 and 2020 let my people go and 2021 we did two teachings i think one was breaking demonic siege and generational curses versus generational mindset in generational curses versus generational mindset i did a little explanation but i think maybe next year we'll come back to do that how that some sp this phenomenon of spirit husband and spirit wife can be transgenerational okay that the spirit that is masquerading as the husband to you may actually have been a husband to your mother and was a husband to your grandmother so every generation he will come and look for the one that god has raised as the star or the one that god has raised as the opener and yoke himself by reason of the covenant of marriage okay but it will be broken in the name of jesus let me not talk too much on that all right next question please can we celebrate jesus Next question. How can one sustain his or her deliverance? How can one sustain his or her deliverance? First of all, how do you know you are delivered? Amen. You know, I like new matter. I like these people. I like all of us. You are looking at me now like you want to know. Why didn't you ask the question? You are hiding, eh? All right. First of all, how did you know you were delivered? John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Because you need to know, we, we need to be sure how you knew you were delivered before you can talk about sustaining deliverance. You can't sustain what you don't have. Isn't it? You can't remember what you don't know. That's why some students go to exam all and they say, I, I was just blank in the exam. You didn't read. <laughs> Amen. None of you will be blank in this exam in Jesus' name. Uh, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance. Okay. So if you didn't read anything, it will bring empty sheets to your mind. <laughs> Amen. Now somebody say, but apostle, somebody, somebody say, that God showed him the answer in the exam hall. Well, I, there are two things to that. Number one, you don't know the tenets of that person's personal relationship with God. Because God deals with us as individuals. Okay? And so you don't know the basis of that person's personal relationship with God. That's number one. Number two, you don't know if there are spiritual laws that that person understands that can override on the natural law of what you read is what you will remember is that true well let me stop on that there's somebody now that wants to ask question on that so ask and send it there i'll, I'll come for you but then this is what he says that john 8:31. then jesus said to those jews who believed in him if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed take note of the fact that he was encouraging them to continue in the word of god truth is not discovered in one day so those people that read the bible and they say anytime i read the bible it is boring continue reading it is in continuing that light will break forth 
Are you hearing me? You don't pray in tongues one day and become anointed overnight. It doesn't happen like that. Even Jesus had to go to the bush for how many days? All right. Next verse. He said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, you know you have been delivered. The day that the truth that surpasses that situation comes to you. Deliverance does not begin when the person falls down under the anointing. No. No. This is in my, in my, in my idea of deliverance, especially from experience in the deliverance ministry. Deliverance begins the day the person knows that I have a problem and that this problem is beyond the natural. Deliverance has started. Because that will create an anxiety in the person an inquisitive attitude to seek for knowledge and then the day that you discover the truth from the word of god that surpasses or overrides that problem in your life that's the day your deliverance started in fact that's the day you were free what the anointing will come to do will just be to perform what the truth has said are we are we here so if somebody is struggling with sickness he will always fall sick they'll pray for him he'll get well fall sick again they pray for him he'll get well and he will usually fall sick most times when he's about to go to church or when he's about to go on a spiritual journey that will take him to a higher level then you know that that is beyond sickness that is now spiritual so what is the truth that will override on this consistency of affliction the day you discover that truth from the word of god either by studying the word or by listening to a message that's the day you were delivered now to the question how do you sustain deliverance very simple i told you before that the source of a thing determines its consistent it's it's what is is sustenance so if your deliverance came through the word of god why didn't you go back the next service you came, received your deliverance after miracle service and you ran away. You are waiting for the next miracle service. Jesus said when an unclean spirit is casted out of a man, it will go through dry places, seeking rest and not find it. Because what you did now, that spirit that held the person bound, as soon as you cast out that spirit from the individual who was the host, that spirit becomes restless. That in itself is a torment to demon spirits. And if they stay restless like that continually, they will have no option but to vacate the earth's surface and go back to the abyss. And because they don't want to go back there, they will rather look for another human host and enter. So the first thing they will do is, that place where they evicted me from, let me go back and check. Now when the person goes and checks and discovers that you are not following the symmetry of listening to or studying the word of God. To build your knowledge of God, you are empty. When the person discovers that you have not received salvation, or you are not even carrying the Holy Ghost, and being trained in the knowledge of God, you are empty. The person goes right back. And the, the demon goes right back. And the Bible says the demon will go and bring seven other because he needs to fortify the, re the reason that brought it out must not happen again so he will take all that demons that will fortify his hold do we understand that so this is how you can sustain your deliverance simply continue in the line with which you receive the deliverance if it came through the word of god continue on the word jesus said if you continue you are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free you will discover that if you continue a time will come where you are no longer susceptible to the attack of that spirit but even beyond that you have now received empowerment to bring other people from the bondage that that spirit has placed them in somebody say amen because god does not heal you so that you can keep receiving healing he heals you so that the residue of that anointing will make you a healer can we clap for jesus all right how many questions do we have left oh they are asking nice now they are asking you know see 
We still Nine. have four, six questions. Six questions. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll be faster now. All right. So this is a two-in-one question. The first says, "What is a spiritual tribe and lineage?" What is a spiritual tribe and lineage? And the second is, "How can I key into any of the spiritual gifts?" This person is a man of God. Though. This person is a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's a good question. What is a spiritual tribe and lineage? And how can I key into let me start from the second question? First of all, in First Corinthians chapter 12, we understand that that there are diversity of gifts. Gifts, I mean to say. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God distributes these gifts. To every man as he wills. So, you cannot say, this is my spiritual gift. No. Because you don't own it. Even though it is a gift, but it was given to you, and the condition is based on the will of the Holy Ghost. So, first of all, the Spirit of God is the source of all spiritual gifts. That said, it is, now that you know the Holy Spirit is the source, it is very simple. Walk with the Holy Ghost. Fellowship with Him. And then the Bible also says to desire earnestly. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. To desire earnestly. So, fellowship with the Holy Ghost. That's another question. How do I fellowship with the Holy Ghost? No, be so. Is that not another question? I have, because I'm seeing the question popping out of your minds now. How do I fellowship with the Holy Ghost? Number one, maintain a life of prayer. Number two, spend time to worship and to praise the Lord. Okay? When you are praising and worshiping God, the Holy Ghost is the one there. Both to receive the worship in honor of Jesus and then to release what that worship or praise is supposed to activate. That's why he was given to us. Okay? So, spend time praising and worshipping the Lord and live a life of obedience. Acts chapter 5 verse 32. The Bible says God gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey him. These are ways by which you can fellowship with the Holy Ghost. So, the Holy Spirit is the source. Fellowship with him, walk with him, and then desire. And then he will release the gift to you. Another way by which you can enter into the operation of spiritual gifts is through the ministry of the fivefold. Through the ministry of the fivefold. The fivefold ministry is given by Jesus Christ to his body for the purpose of growth and edification. They are leadership and administrative offices. Especially the office of the apostle or the prophet. Most times, if you sit under the tutelage of these offices, you can come into an impartation of spiritual gifts. Okay? Then the first question, what is a spiritual tribe and lineage? Two answers. Number one, by the grace of God, we'll teach on that next year. And then number two, for now, I'll answer it in a very simple way. I'll answer it with an illustration. God had a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isn't it? And that covenant began to manifest fully in Jacob when he, was, when he became Israel. Isn't it? So, Israel had 12 sons. And those 12 sons became 12 tribes. Because remember, God promised Abraham, nations will come from you. Isn't it? So these 12 tribes, when Jacob was to die, he blessed all his sons. And the blessings he gave to them became the identity of the tribes that they will become patriarchs of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Good. Now in the New Testament, in Christ Jesus, the Bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In heavenly places in Christ. So when you come into Christ, there are different faculties. 
different departments just like you enter a university and you have different faculties and in the different faculties you have different departments isn't it but all of them are still under one university so that's how it is spiritual lineage or tribe is simply now that you are in christ the manifestation of the fullness of christ has been departmentalized to different expressions these expressions are pioneered by certain men that walked with God in Christ. And when you come into Christ, by the help of the Holy Ghost, God will locate you to the one that carries the traits that are comparable to your destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. Alpha, for instance. Please stand. Now, he's a music minister, as you know. When he gave his life to Christ, he was a new creature in Christ. But then, he has a destiny to fulfill in Christ. And no man wants, one man's life is enough to, to express or to reveal all of the fullness of Christ. So, there is a dimension of Christ he is meant to reveal. So, what God will do by the Holy Ghost is now that he is in Christ, God will look for the family that carries spiritual abilities or traits that are that his destiny in Christ is connected to so God will join him to people who carry the psalmistry anointing they are to reveal Christ but through music so God will join him with them and it is like a family and because a family is transgenerational it's something that will go from one generation spiritually to another generation do you understand that so that is how we get spiritual lineage and spiritual tribe it's just like the way you have tribe in the natural all of us here are nigerians but we come from different tribes and our different tribes carry different traits and characteristic features there are certain things an evil man will do you know he's an evil man isn't it for instance the first person to look for how to start business when you people travel to a place then chances are that's an evil man yes or no if you see a yoruba man you will know let an elderly person just pass what will you see them do they almost lie down on the ground is that true so that just the way you have that in our our different tribes are meant to express the diversity of the nation nigeria so in christ we have different spiritual genealogies all of us are still in christ but we are departmentalized to express god in different ways so that a blend of all becomes the fullness of christ another question to that how do i know my spiritual lineage and tribe don't look for it just walk with the holy ghost he will connect you. Next question. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. How can I hear God speak to me? How can I hear God speak to me? That's one. And the second one is, how can I overcome pornography? How can I hear God speak to me? And how can I overcome pornography? Question number one. The answer is this. If you are born again then you have been programmed to hear from god john chapter 10 verse 27 is that the verse our workers workers you will know that verse we treated when we had our own question and answers obsession my sheep hears my voice where is it john 10 27 right get that verse for us quickly please so once you are born again the life of God is in you. You and God are now sharing the same life. So you are permit, you are supposed to feel what God feels. You are supposed to think how God thinks. You are supposed to move how God moves. Any woman that gives birth to a child, you will know there is a connection between that mother and that child, isn't it? A woman will not give birth to an antelope. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you are born again, you have been programmed by default to hear from God. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they 
follow me. Now that you are born again, you will need to surrender yourself to the teaching of the word of God first. The first thing that a man should receive when he becomes born again is the word of God. I didn't say the Holy Ghost is because the Holy Ghost is part of the package of salvation. In fact, you are not supposed to, now don't get me wrong, but you are not supposed to receive salvation and then receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost later. No. No. There are many reasons for why that happens. But truly the way God designed it is that when you become born again, you should automatically receive the Holy Ghost. Because Acts chapter 10 verse 44, while Peter yet spake this word, the Holy Ghost fell on them that were in the house. He didn't lead them to Christ. They heard, they believed, and immediately they were saved. And instantly the Holy Ghost came on them. However, for some of us who, after 10 years, that was when you now received the Holy Ghost. No problem. You now have the Holy Ghost. The first thing you should be surrendered to is the Word of God. Let me teach you something, Pneumatic. You grow in your spiritual perception based on your knowledge of the Word of God. There's something about the Word of God that sharpens and fine-tunes your ability to perceive the things of God. You know why? Because the Word of God is not just letters. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. It's not just to come and stay in your brain. No. That's the reason why the last time we were in a problem, you shouted the name of your village deity. You forgot the name of Jesus and you shouted the name of your village deity. Amadioha. Then you now remember about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's because you have been putting scripture in your brain. But if you truly open your heart to receive it, you are receiving life. You are receiving spirit. You are receiving more of God because God is his word and his word is him. Are we here? If you are here, say amen. amen. So when you are surrendered to the word of God, the Holy Ghost now begins to activate your spiritual senses. Just the way you have natural senses in your body. There are sense organs in your bodies, in your bodies that helps you to interact with your environment. So also you have spiritual sense organs. You have the ability to hear spiritually. You have the ability to see spiritually. You have the ability to know, to taste, to feel. You hear somebody say, I feel the presence of God. His sense, spiritual sense organ for feeling has been activated. So he can now feel everything that is happening in heaven. Real time where he is. And I want to pray, God told me, you know, that's why you said this service is not a normal service. The Holy Spirit showed me a vision this afternoon. We are going to pray and activate spiritual giftings and your ability to hear from God. How many of you want that? All right. So have I answered that question? Then what's the second question? How do I overcome pornography? Ooh. Okay. First of all, you need to be set free by the anointing. In the case of addiction, huh? in the case of addiction, I, the, the spirits that work with addiction are different. Okay? The spirits that work with, the demon spirits that work with addiction, they are different. Spirits are present in our human civilization for the purpose of perpetuation and consistency it is not human to be consistent so when you find something a, a phenomenon consistent in the life of an individual there is a spirit force a spirit energy or a spirit entity driving it to be consistent there are some people that have an unusual appetite for food and that appetite is 15 years old there's a spirit behind that. It started as an act, but the spirit has come to sustain it. So, the first thing that should be done for the deliverance of someone under addiction is he needs the anointing because he's under a yoke. And the Bible says the yoke is destroyed by what? Isaiah 10 27. So, when the anointing comes into the life of a man, it takes away the spirit component behind that affliction first. 
Now, let me stop here. I will come back to the question, but let me explain how healing and miracles happen in the life of a person. Is it boring at all? Should I stand up? Okay. Some of you that your neighbor is sleeping, tap them. Be your neighbor's usher. If they sleep too much, let them stand. Amen. Smile at them and tell them to please stand. I know you can't smile, just try. There's an anointing for it. Alright? Okay, just turn to your neighbor and smile. I didn't say laugh. Some people are laughing. Alright. Now back to back to what I was saying. Let me explain healing and miracle first because before we come back to this. In healing from an affliction, where the person is prayed for, the anointing comes into the person's body and takes out the spirit that is behind the affliction. Yes, I know the affliction was caused by a germ or a bacteria, but for it to continually stay in the body of that individual till the person is deteriorated to the point of death, it takes a spirit. That bacteria or that germ is just the body, is the host for a spirit to come in. Just like these things, this suit you are, that is looking at me now, is the host for the spiritual you to convey your spirit up and down to allow your spirit interact with this realm are you hearing me so germs and bacteria are the physical body for demon spirits of affliction to thrive in an individual's life so when the anointing comes on that individual it takes out the spirit and then allows the body to naturally recover itself that's healing that's why sometimes some people are not healed immediately jesus told 10 lepers go and show yourself to the priest and the bible says as they went what happened they were healed mark chapter 16 in verse 17 and 18 he said they shall lay their hands on the sick isn't it and they shall what recover but in the case of a healing miracle that one is by the power of god a total change in that person's body in other words the fever instantly leaves that one is not healing that one is a miracle now back to addiction when the anointing is ministered to this person the spirit behind that person is casted out but remember the spirit came and created a mindset in that person so that that person will constantly be given to that action that is called a habit okay a habit is a cycle of action his mind has been programmed to always go for drugs to always go and drink so now that the spirit is out he needs to be rehabilitated mentally professionally i will advise that the person should seek professional counsel it is okay seek a christian psychiatric a psychiatrist a christian psychiatrist but then there's nothing that transforms the mind of a man like the word of god that person needs what i call intensive care unit that person needs to be bombarded with scriptures in fact that person should they should start teaching him how to fast and pray you know why if that is not done that's baby friendly if that is not done the spirit will come back and because there is always a already a mindset it's just like a computer that has a software in it when you go to a bank there is a software in the computer in that bank once you sit down you just have to click once or twice and then it begins to work the way it has been programmed so for you to deactivate that programming the person needs to be surrendered to fasting and prayer to the study of the word of god even when the person is crying that is too much force the person to do more say amen and the person needs to be strictly guided and the person will experience what i call withdrawal symptoms you may find out that after three weeks he may still run back and go and drink when you see the person don't start flogging the person and say you said now what for you you said no no deliverance is a process next question please so in addition to that you will need a lot of love you need to show that person a lot of love a lot of care no condemnation in form of words okay but then keep pushing the person to learn the truth of the word of god and then the deliverance will finally be saved next question thank you so much sir. 
Next question, sir. This is an online question. In our daily lives, why does it feel like in most cases, those that are dedicated and serious in serving God, they are having challenges, especially in regards to work and finance? Please, I need more light on this. I take it again. In our daily lives, why does it feel like in most cases, those that are dedicated and serious in serving God, they are having challenges, especially in regards to work and finances. Please, I need more light on this. Thank you, sir. Let's clap for that question. That's a very intelligent question. Because if that should happen to an individual, chances are that that person will become discouraged from serving God and may eventually even backslide. But why is it possible that you find someone who is serving God, who is working with God, or maybe a very strong prayer individual, and financially the person is broke, or the person is having problems in other parts of his or her life? Well, there are a number of answers to this. Number one, the Bible tells us that we have been given, to us it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 verse 11. The mysteries of the kingdom are the laws by which the kingdom of God operates. Those laws, when understood, when known, understood and applied, have the capacity to override unnatural limitations. Let me say what I said again. Those laws, when known, understood, because there's no way you understand something you don't know. Knowledge is information. You, information is the raw material for understanding. And it is when you have gained understanding, you can now enter into wisdom. Wisdom usually will come at the application stage. Did you hear that? It's not part of the question, but I'm just saying that for the sake of somebody. When you know, understand, and apply these laws, it has a way of overriding or superimposing on your natural limitations. So, the fact that you are in Christ and you are serving God does not exempt you from giving yourself to the proper schooling of the Word of God so that you can know the things that make for life and godliness. In the kingdom, there is a provision for financial dominion for wealth wealth is a possibility in the kingdom wisdom is a possibility in the kingdom what else power is a possibility in the kingdom but you need to know the laws by which you can access these operational systems in the kingdom and then understand them well enough to apply them otherwise you'll be very prayerful but you'll be broke because the king of God, God is a God of justice. God is not like men that can politicize everything. No. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. What a man sows is what he reaps. So, if all you know about God is prayer, you will be very effective in prayer. But you don't know from the word of God what allocates to you the grace for wisdom. It doesn't mean God has not given to you. He has given it to you in Christ. But you need to access it through knowledge. If you are with me, say amen. You need to access it through what? Knowledge. So that could be one reason why somebody is serving God and dedicated and is still having challenges. Challenges are a sign of limitations. And the first cure to limitation is knowledge. In fact, Another name for deliverance is knowledge or enlightenment. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. No matter how much you pray, if you are not consistent in tithing and offerings, you will be poor. Are you hearing me? The peace of God has been given to you in Christ. But there is a system of knowledge you need to access it. If you don't know it, you will remain in crisis. You say, Apostle, how is it possible that I have Christ in me and I have crises around me? Did Jesus, was Jesus not sleeping in the boat when there was storm around? 
And as soon as they woke Jesus up, what did he do? Everything changed. Now the Bible says, Christ has been made known to us the wisdom and the power. The problem with believers is, we are not patient to learn. See the way I'm talking now, so people are already yawning. You are not patient to learn. Just to sit down with a message of 30 minutes, they sleep 15 minutes. We break that spirit of slumber. And if you don't learn, how will you grow? Amen. Now, another answer to that could be, for that person, I will say it as a form of encouragement. The fact that God treats your life as a whole does not mean God is working in every aspect of your life at once. No. Your life is like a building. And every building you see is done stage by stage. And based on the stage of that building, you will find the artisans, the skilled men, the workmen that are needed. There is a stage in building a house where everybody will have to go and leave the plumber alone. There is a stage where everybody will have to go and leave the electrician to put the pipes. And after putting the pipe, he doesn't just put wires and everything immediately. No, he will go as though he will not return back to that building. And then the mezzanine will come, you know, finish the block work, plaster everything. And then you just see them leave those places where the pipes are. Then the electrician will come back. That's how your life is. You are a building. The Bible says you are God's building. First Corinthians chapter 3. So I encourage you to give God time allow him now he's focusing on the prayer aspect of your life allow him to build enough stature there when he is done with that he will move to your finances when he's done with that he will move to peace when he's done with that he will move to marriage and then gradually you will come into the fullness the not how did the bible call it the full the stature the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ and let me add to that sometimes God builds you by allowing to go through trials and tribulations. Count it all joy. James chapter 1 verse 2. When you, go, when you go through trials and tribulations, knowing what? That the trial of your faith worketh patience. Some of you are here now. The last three months, what you have been suffering is a class you are going through in the spirit. How many of you have been in that place where you were so broke financially, and every possible means to supply money to you was blocked for about a week. How many of you have been there before? Sometimes it's not demonic. Sometimes it's a test of faith. God is teaching you how to trust him. Because God knows that the normal you, you send text to your uncle in Abuja. Or you send text to your auntie that is in Lagos. And then when God starts teaching you about kingdom wealth and prosperity, the first lesson you must learn is that God is the source of all things. And for God to become your number one source, he will have to block other source and allow you hunger for one, one week at least. You will not die. Say amen to that. And if you are there and God have not taught you that, may God bring you into that experience in Jesus' name. Why are you, why are you, you say amen now. Don't worry, if you can't chest it after one week, come and meet me. We will give you just enough to sustain you, then you will continue. Amen and amen. Next question, please. Thank you, sir. At what time can one stop praying on an issue, especially foundations and patterns? At what time can a man stop praying on an issue, especially foundations and patterns? And patterns. Well, you stop when the Holy Ghost has given you the sign that it is over. Next question. So this is on relationship. Now listen, let me let me teach you how to pray. If you are praying against a stubborn issue, or you are praying on an issue that seems like it will not go, especially when it is related to deliverance, I will advise you number one, seek the help of a pastor or seek the help of someone who is higher spiritually. But mainly you cannot pray that prayer without the help of the Holy Ghost. This is why the gift of speaking in tongues is given. In fact, there are some problems. You don't handle the problems by praying in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lack, go! It's not like that. 
What if the person that caused that lack was God Himself? To bridle your appetite. Because you buy cheese balls on Monday, you buy chips on Tuesday, you buy what? Ice cream on Wednesday. Your mouth cannot rest. And then on Sunday, you come to church with offering of 100 naira. But you spent 8,000 naira during the week giving yourself treat. And you say you love God. You now lift, you now open that mouth and, and sing when they are singing during worship. Father, we declare. God said, I don't want to hear that. So, how do we solve this problem? Block all the channels. Uh -huh. So, in that case now, where it is God that is fighting you, or in the case where you are a victim of your ignorance or you are a victim of your disobedience, how will you now pray and binding? Uh, start binding. Are you binding yourself or you are binding God? So when you are praying on an issue that you have little knowledge about, first of all, you need wisdom from God to know how to go around that problem. You start by praying in tongues. No prayer point. Just keep speaking in tongues. The Bible says, this is what the Bible says. It says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. That it cannot be uttered means that it is not in, in, in articulate speech. And it therefore means it's something you cannot understand. So you pray until you secure wisdom from God. Then the Holy Ghost will now tell you, fast for seven days. Pray by 12 midnight. And then when you continue with that directive, maybe at the sixth day or the seventh day, you will have a dream or the Holy Spirit will speak to you. There is going to be a sign from the Holy Ghost to let you know the prayer has been answered. So you stop when the Holy Ghost says stop. So if you don't know when the Holy Ghost says stop, then you need to get the Holy Ghost. Next question. Thank you, sir. This is a relationship question. And it's eh? two. A it's relationship what? question. Relationship question. Yes, sir. And it's two in one. Okay. The first is, please, sir, is it good to be romancing each other in a relationship before marriage how did you feel when you the last time you did the romance how did you feel you that asked the question you went back i started asking for forgiveness ba? and so no it's very easy except you are an unbeliever but if 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 well, if i'm talking to a believer you know the bible says he has shown you oh man of god what is good so that you are without excuse all right you have the spirit of god in you so you know when it's a sin or not the last time you did the romance he said you 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 even fasted and asked for forgiveness so it's, so it's not good what's the, the second is, is that the question <laughs> is that the, is that all the question no the second the second question on the relationship okay. is it wrong to marry or date a man that has already gone out with your friend but the relationship did not work out between them. You know, I just confirmed. When they started asking that question, when they said relationship question, I had a knowing in my spirit it was a lady that was asking the question. So as soon as he said man, I knew I just confirmed it. Amen. Uh, Pastor Henry, is it? <laughs> you are married now, so <laughs> give the mic to Pastor Henry, please. Let him answer for us. Yes, please celebrate it. Pastor, is it, is it wrong to wait, wait? Let me even get the question. Is it married? Was it? Is it, is it wrong it? to marry or date a man that had? Okay. already gone out with your friend he has gone out and he came back but the relationship did not work out between them please sir one minute please thank you so much sir, for this privilege hallelujah amen praise the living god hallelujah there's something i marked there when the relationship did not work praise the living jesus hallelujah you see what if the purposes of god or god meant meant it that that your friend is meant to be with the other with the person praise the living jesus you know the fact that we all know that the fact that you're dating someone it must not necessarily you know sometimes it might not necessarily lead to marriage right 
So what if you and that person are not meant to be? That's the purposes of God for both of both of you did not suit each other. Why it suit that your friend? Hallelujah. So now the question now part of the question when it didn't meant to be. Do you understand? It didn't work out. That's me, it didn't work out. And what if the person just realized that this person I made a wrong choice initially, but this person is where God is leading me to. So how do we tackle the case now? Now because of friendship, do you just ignore the will of God? I don't know. Are we really handy to somewhere? Because of because of friendship, do you just because of your friend, do you just ignore the will of God? It didn't work for that person. And probably the will of God is for your friend and the other, yeah, your ex to be married. So now, will your friend ignore the will of God just because of you? So you see, it didn't work out. If there is genuinely, if there is genuineness there, and there's pure, pure purity, rather, if the genuineness and purity, sincerity is there, I don't think there is anything wrong with that. Why just, just if there is sincerity, why just wish the person well? It didn't work out. Probably it's not the will of God. Yeah, we, it's not the will of God. But now we understand this is. If there's will of God for them to get married, just wish them, just, just wish them well. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Thank you very much, sir. Amen. So generally speaking, it is not wrong. However, you have to go about it with wisdom so that your acts are not misunderstood. Do we understand? As long as you are not having feelings for the man when your friend was fearing with the man I hear what I'm saying as long as you were not having feelings no you were neutral and then it didn't work out they broke up and you see break up is not a sin are you hearing me yes that's the reason why you know that stage of relationship that's where you get to know yourself more and then discover if you are compatible enough to make the commitment of marriage naturally breakup is not a sin however if you are in the business of breaking people's hearts because you want to exploit is a sin and if they swear for you eh? okay so what I will advise that young lady is very simple allow that the relationship not to work oh, sorry to be called off and eventually, if the man comes to approach you immediately, turn it down first. Let there be a good space of time so that your friend can heal. Otherwise, your friend will look at you as a what? Snitch. Uh -huh. Then, before you accept the person's proposal, tell the person, to go back to that your friend that he has broken up with and explain to your friend what he's about to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is wisdom I'm teaching you. Let him, it's not with your mouth that they will hear. Let him use his mouth and tell your friend. If your friend will not listen, then involved a pastor or a spiritual guide your friend may eventually listen and be properly counseled after that now that there is an understanding between the three of you then the man can come and register his proposal and then you can accept and be determined to run that relationship on a somewhat different scale or use principles that are different from what was when your friend was going out with that man are you hearing what i'm saying and then i'm still speaking because now ladies it usually will happen more to ladies now that you are going out with a man don't use it to spite your friend no no still love your friend if, especially if she accepts everything and she's fine there are some other people that will not accept they will start planning evil towards you. The moment you discern, space, give space and run away. Okay? Don't spite your friend with it. Love your friend and then trust God for wisdom by which you can go around that relationship and it will culminate to a successful marriage.
I don't know if I've answered that person. If you are not satisfied, you can meet me after the service. All right, our time is going now. How many more questions do we have? Three. Three, okay, quickly. Now. Please, sir, how do you study your Bible for the purpose of growth and not knowledge alone? Is it me? How me, I study my Bible? Or how should the person study the Bible? I think it should be how the person study his Bible. How can someone study his Bible for the okay. purpose of growth? Growth is measured first of all in knowledge. I think there's a scripture that said grow in the knowledge. Right? Aha. Uh-huh. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the... So the first yardstick to measure growth is by knowledge. That's why I, I thank God that the person said study, not read. Because a lot of people read, they don't study. Reading is going to understand the in-depth of that particular text, that particular Bible passage or chapter. You want to know what was spoken about there. Alright? And then study is systematic. Study is not only spiritual. There is a spiritual approach to studying and then there is a systematic approach to studying. The spiritual approach to studying the Bible is that the Holy Ghost will lead you. Study on this part time. Or study this chapter. Or study this book. That's the spiritual aspect. Now if you just jump and open your Bible and start reading like that, without applying the systematic aspect, you will come out more confused. So what do you do systematically now? Get a study Bible. Everybody please lift your Bible up. Okay, okay, don't, don't, don't lift that. I just saw some people's face now like this. Let me, who has a small Bible in front? Let me, let me have your Bible. Sir. You, you can't claim to be studying the Bible and you are, having, you are holding this kind of Bible alone. You are not studying, you are reading. There is nothing systematic in this. Okay? This is not a study Bible. This one is for reading. Buy a study Bible. Buy it. Let it cost you. You know, I, I was talking to the worship team two days ago, or, you know, a day ago, and I told them, I said, how many of you have, how much have you spent on your mental development? You see somebody that has not spent money to build his or herself in knowledge, and is now expecting that people will place value on what he says. How do you, what, what you sow is what you reap. I bought a study Bible recently. When we went to the shop to buy, I had finished buying some books. When I touched the Bible, I always wanted to buy that Bible. When I touched the Bible, they said 22,000. I said, yeah. 22,000. I bought that Bible and started reading it from the next day. So that my money will read. So, buy a study Bible. Buy a Bible that has chain references. Okay? Some of those Bibles you will see under the verse. You will see that they wrote some other scriptural verses that you can refer to. To understand better what is written in that verse. There are some that even at the middle here, you will see some verses. There are some Bibles that have concordance. They will show you the meaning of a word from a to z the meaning of different words in scripture if you have the money buy a bible dictionary it will help you you study first for knowledge it is when you have received knowledge that you can get light and understanding the entrance of your word give it what light and then ask the holy spirit to help you as you study god bless you i think that's that's it for that question next question for this should be the last time yes can any sin committed before God and man be forgiven by Christ Jesus? Can any sin committed before God and man be forgiven by Christ Jesus? Ephesians chapter 1. Please put it on the screen for us from verse 6. Can any sin committed before God and man be forgiven? Be forgiven by Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. 
to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved go on in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of so everything that christ did on the cross the first thing the first provision that was made through the death of christ on the cross is what forgiveness the first provision that was made through the death and the shedding of the blood of jesus is what forgiveness of sins the sins there is plural are you hearing me past present and future the blood of jesus has been shed to provide forgiveness for sin however the bible tells us jesus himself was speaking in matthew about a sin that will not be forgiven and he says that is the sin of blasphemy against the holy ghost elijah please give us that scripture matthew chapter 12 look for the very scripture i think it's between verse 28 to 30. that's why it's good to have somebody anointed handling the projector amen he just knows the scripture amen yes yeah, so everything in the house of god you, you must be anointed to do it too. even to clean church you, mu you must do it with the anointing are you hearing me uh -huh. matthew 12 let's end with this 12 28 to 30. the sin of blasphemy that's the sin that the bible speaks of that will not be forgiven okay let's let's start from verse 29 uh, okay 32 32 32 yes anyone who speaks a word against this okay read from verse 31 let's go from verse 31 so we understand the context therefore i say to you now you see if i didn't study i will not how will i be able to give you all these scriptures and those of us with all due respect you can pray for five hours and look at your bible for 15 minutes eh you are suffering from spiritual kashoko you are not growing you are gathering so much power that you will not be able to use you know that people like that they just they only believe in praying in tongues bible studies ain't a lie like there's no anointing in bible studies but praying in tongues yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, they will groan they will keep groaning no results therefore i say to you every sin <laughs> why are you laughing in front <laughs> therefore i say to you every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men so all kinds of sins and all kinds of blasphemy what is blasphemy it simply means to speak against to derogate to insult do you understand good now in this context it's talking about blasphemy towards god every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men next verse therefore okay anyone who speaks a word against the son of man it will be forgiven him but whoever speaks against the holy spirit now it narrowed into the sin of blasphemy which means to speak against but it but whoever speaks against the holy spirit it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come the reason was because jesus healed a man that was deaf and blind and the demons left the man and the man was healed and then the pharisees when they heard it they said that jesus was able to cast out demons because he had a demon so blasphemy simply means or blasphemy against god simply means attributing to another entity the workings of god now the bible says all sins and blasphemy will be forgiven and then he now says anyone that speaks a word against the son of man in other words any blasphemy against the son of man will be forgiven him but whoever blasphemes or speaks against the holy spirit it will not be forgiven him what it means there is that when a man 
performs a miraculous act by the power of God and then you open your mouth and say that man is possessed by a demon or you say the man is using juju or is using black power that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit because they said that Jesus was able to heal that man or cast out demons because he had demons they were attributing the glory to satan what god had done every blasphemy against the son of man will be forgiven him that means you can speak against a man for all you want to you can talk about his physical limitations you can talk about the fact that he's divorced from his marriage how is this still preaching you can talk about things happening in his natural life but don't you dare talk about his calling or the anointing in his life draw a boundary whatever has happened around that man's life he's still anointed there's a scripture i saw that blessed me i think it's in second kings chapter 3 where david with his mouth he said i am this day weak yet anointed king of israel so you can talk about anything in the natural aspect of that man that is the son of man the son of that man there simply means the life of that man in the flesh but when it has to do with the man of god not the man that is now the spiritual aspect if you talk against that aspect of a man's life you are blaspheming against the holy ghost and the bible said the bible itself not me the bible said that there is no forgiveness for that not in this life or in the life to come because there are two two sins you committed there in my understanding there are two sins you committed first of all you gave glory to satan what the holy ghost did the holy ghost was there casting out demons through this man satan is minding his business elsewhere you didn't glorify god you are glorifying satan how would you feel when you do something and somebody else takes the credit how do you feel talk to me don't be quiet now talk to me how do you feel some of you you send five thousand to your sister and she didn't send you a text to say thank you the next day you call her that's what they do when they send you a small money eh? so every time god is not glorified for his activities but rather satan is glorified that's blasphemy i don't know if i've answered that question yeah however let me add to this as we close i just had a discernment in my spirit to add this the fact that all sins can and have been forgiven doesn't mean now that you know that okay god can forgive me any sin apart from the sin of blasphemy i'll go and fornicate then when i finish i'll come back and say father forgive me after all the bible says in him we have redemption in his blood we have redemption which is the forgiveness of him now god will forgive you though that was deliberate but you know what you have done first of all you you have insulted the grace of god because the grace of god did not only appear to save you from sin it also empowered you to live in victory above sin you have insulted the bible says insulting the spirit of grace number two you have exercised the nature of the flesh that the holy ghost killed when you became born again that part of you that always makes you susceptible to sin when you became born again the holy ghost killed it now you have gone to resurrect king so you discover that committing the sin the next time will become easy in fact before you even say jesus you have fornicated and then gradually you see the strength strength in the kingdom most times is based on indulgence if you keep obeying god you will become stronger by the day in obeying god if you start giving to god or giving to people the more you give the stronger you will become in giving it becomes easy for the holy ghost to leave you lead you because obedience has exercised your body unto righteousness so if you make a practice of sin you have exercised your body unto ungodliness 
another law which is the law of sin and death will come to work in your nature and you begin to die slowly even though you have the holy ghost till a time comes where you become addicted you can't you can't it's like you can't save yourself from it and may god not punish you that in that state satan takes your life because that person will go to hell but all of us will be saved in jesus name amen and amen are we blessed let's stand let's stand amen are we blessed tonight can we give a thunderous clap to jesus now before we pray ah there's no time i wanted to do some activations should we do it or not later you now say we are closing late okay how many minutes do you want us to do it i just want i just want us to pray and activate our spiritual senses so we can hear god but if there's no time for that we can close and come next sunday so it's an open service should we do it or not eh? okay just give me five minutes okay we'll be done now i want you to do something i'm going to pray for a set of people and just follow me just be obedient we'll try to round up in five minutes and then we are done tonight for those of us that came for the first time you are welcome i'm going to ask you to lay your hands on different parts of your body and then i'll pray when i pray if you sense any strange feeling like maybe heat or electricity or coldness any feeling that you sense that is abnormal once you get it come to the front okay then after that prayer those in front i will pray for them and they will activate their spiritual senses the reason why you will get the feeling is because that will be the sign from the holy ghost that that is the spiritual sense he wants to activate did you hear that and so it's like a diagnosis prayer before the main prayer because there are some of you that god wants to activate your eyes so that you can see spiritually there's such a thing as seeing into the spirit god has used me to save the life of many people through sight i have seen accidents in the life of people and it was corrected and handled there's such a thing as hearing you can hear from god one instruction per time and that instruction can open you to a season of abundance many people are delayed where they are right now or are suffering where they are because they couldn't hear the instruction for the particular season of their life so for some of you it's your hearing that will be open for some of you it's your ability to feel for some of you it's your ability to know for some of you it's your ability to sense so we are going to get that done and then when we get these people out don't be shy you just come out okay once you sense that strange feeling where your hands are laid except if i ask you to lift your hands then you'll get the feeling on your hands okay if you sense it just come and then we'll pray together for those people and it will be activated people are going to hear god this evening people are going to enter into spiritual experiences in the name of jesus christ now lay your hands on your eyes lay your two hands just these two fingers rather just these two put it on your two eyes close your eyes and put it there be magnified oh lord you are highly exalted don't sing just allow me and there is nothing you can do oh lord our eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be magnified 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone that is here who needs to be activated in the place of spiritual sight and visions, I declare by the power of the anointing that they are activated right now in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing that causes a man to see come on them right now in the name of Jesus. Let their sight be activated right now in the name of Jesus. Bring down your hands. If you felt anything on your eyes or on your fingers while on your eyes, come to the front. Don't be shy, just come. If you felt something, just come. Now put your hands on your ears. Use your index fingers from each hand on your ears. Let's pray for hearing now. The Bible says the hearing ear belongs to God. Say after me, Father, I thank you because today you will activate my ability to hear. You're not saying it with faith. You will activate my ability to hear spiritually. Father, activate my hearing in the spirit by the power of your anointing in Jesus name no put your hands there just for a moment just softly play but just softly thank you father remove your hands if you felt anything around your ears come to the front some of you felt like your ears all of a sudden became blocked it's like it became blocked for some of you, you felt some vibrations you just felt something on your ear come to the front please come don't be shy just come you asked for it uh, just come there's one of you that felt like breeze you know, let me uh, you know when wind is blowing huh you know that noise it makes there's one of you who felt like that who, who is that person you felt exactly because right now whatever i ask you to do god is using me as a thermometer to pick so i know when it's happening here all right lay your hands on your head there is a spiritual sense called knowing the ability to know things that you were not taught it's called spiritual knowledge in fact this is one of the greatest means by which god speaks to people he says that he will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you may know colossians 1 and verse 9 that he will fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you will be able to walk worthy of the lord pleasing him for always abounding in good works father as their hands are on their head right now i activate the sense of knowing by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the ministry of the angelic at the count of five, let it be activated right now. One, two, three, four, five. Amen. Now I was not I'm not ministering the anointing, no. Remove your hand. If you felt like something just came on your head. If you felt like something just passed over your head or came on your head or any kind of feeling on your head come to the front quickly those ones that are under the anointing just leave them I was not ministering the anointing I'm just checking just come I've not ministered I've not ministered yet now this is a mantle at this point now the anointing is here is on all of us but you see while you are operating with just the anointing i'm operating now with the anointing and my mantle my mantle has become stronger because the bible says that jesus began both to do and to teach so the full measure of the teaching anointing is the ability to demonstrate what you teach so now that the holy ghost has come on us my mantle has been activated to do what i just finished teaching do you understand this is school of ministry 
Which other sense should we activate now? Okay, the sense of feeling. Just stretch your hands before you. I want to sing a song that has to do with the presence of God. I don't know if you know this song. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Okay, which song? I just need to sing. Before the anointing moves, I need to sing a song that has to do with the presence of the Lord. Which song? Is heaven to me? You don't believe me, so all of us, let's sing the song together. Your presence is heaven to me. Father, let the sense of feeling, not just emotional feelings or the feelings of physical activities, but the ability to feel and experience your presence. The ability to feel and experience that which is happening in the throne room. By day and by night. Whether the person is at work or at home or in school. Father, I declare by the fire of your spirit, let that sense be activated right now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say the Amen five times. It will be activated. Number one. Amen. Number two. Amen. Number three. Amen. Number four. Amen. Number five. Amen. If you felt anything on your hand, come. Now, this is why I asked you to say Amen five times. The reason why I said say amen five times is because you have five physical senses and your skin is the largest sense organ. And your skin is a sense organ for what? For what now? Ah. So you know that these things are not spiritual gymnastics. This is a level of understanding that can activate this. If you felt anything on your hand, you felt heat, you felt fire, you felt cold, you some of you felt on your two hands, some on your hand. Where are those that felt anything on their hand? Stand here because God is talking to me now. There's, some, there's somebody that, there's an anointing. Now, please, quickly, let them stand here. There's an anointing that is about to be released. Quickly. You felt, so, oh, you are coming out because I said, separate them because I want to discharge an, an anointing separate them you felt something those of you in the congregation speak in tongues if you can breathe on me oh lord breathe on me breathe on me oh lord For life, breathe on me, oh Lord, breathe on me. It's time for you to begin to hear the voice of God. It's time for you to begin to understand what the Spirit of God is doing in your life. Now, those of you that felt something on your hand, just open your two hands. There are between three to five of you that there is a healing grace that is going to come on you and the sign will be you will feel heat on both your hands there are about three to five of you when i pray you will feel heat on both your hands for some of you the heat will just be mild but for about two of you it will be very intense father let that gift of healing that anointing for healing be released the ability to subdue the spirit of affliction become a vessel with which God will bring healing I activate it right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus 
There will be five of them, three to five. But among them, there are two that is come is very strong, so they will not be able to contain it very hot now. All right, those of you in front. If it was your eyes, you placed your hand on. Placed it there. If it was your ear, you placed placed it there. If it was your hands, you lifted. If it was your head, just put your hands where. I want to pray now. And after I pray, after I pray, I will ask you to shout Jesus. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Now you say my dwarm now. Uh, so why you talk to me now? Next week is miracle service. You don't want to miss that service. But let's pray now. When I pray, when I finish praying, I want you in the congregation to shout Jesus. When you shout Jesus, the anointing will be activated for them. You, all kinds of things will happen here. People will speak in tongues. Some the anointing will just be distributed. Some of them will begin to see visions. It's already happening now. Father, in the name of oh, I feel it right now. Lord. You, Moses said, I wish that all of God's people are prophets and you, they, that they have the Spirit of God on them. Lord, I ask by an impartation of your Spirit now, let every spiritual sense as they desire be open now. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Now shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Touch, 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 activated, 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 activate, help them, activated, activated, eyes open, ears open, the ability to know, know things that you were not taught, be open, the sense of feeling, take it, take that presence, take it right now, take it right now, many of them will begin to see visions instantly. This is open service. How great you are. Oh, how great you are. La ruki pureke mio koraki yoko for komda hagradi. There are two people that the spirit of prophecy will come on. Okay, three. Two are in front. One is in the congregation. There are three of them. It will come. They will begin to prophesy. Two are in front. One is in the congregation. All the three of them will begin to prophesy. Oh, 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 oh. Take that grace now. Take that grace. 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 They will begin to prophesy. There are two in front. There is one in the congregation. They will begin to prophesy loudly. Help that young man there. Because I see a very strong anointing coming on him. The one at the area there. There is something strong in this place. Maruka de Halasivia. I declare over your life in this season, you will hear the voice of God. I declare over your life divine instructions. He says your teachers will not be removed from your sight, but your eyes will see your teachers. And your ears will hear a voice behind you. I declare this season, you will hear the voice of God. You will not walk in darkness or confusion. Your business is about to take a new turn. Your career is about to take a new turn. Some of you will hear God tell you, resign from that job. It's time for another job. You will hear God literally, he will tell you. You will not need to wait till you are fired or till your contract expired. You will hear God. Some of you want to travel and God will say, don't travel. Some you want to travel and God will say, travel. And that will be a prosperous trip. This is the end of the year. One of the advantage we have over the enemy is our ability to sense what God is saying. Some of you, God will speak to you and interpret to you something he showed you before. In the name of Jesus. Put your two hands on your chest, you. 
and you Susan just put your two hands on your chest and close your eyes there's an anointing that is coming on you I don't know what it is but I just saw something like fire like a tongue of fire moving upon you right now father release it upon her right now at the count of three one two and three release let that grace come upon you now God is doing something here thank you Jesus blessed be your name blessed be your name in Jesus name we